lot of people learn when you grow up doing photography or painting or whatever, you get sort of the Kodak rule, which is place your subject, you know, always in front of the light. We're kind of in front of the light right now, which is, it's always, you know, good with low light like it is now. It's kind of late afternoon and, and it has a pleasing effect. But more often than not, I look for dramatic lighting where it be, you know, at sunrise or sunset. Or maybe there's a storm coming over the hill and the lights uh, behind the subject, in other words, backlit. So I think it's oftentimes more dramatic and more powerful, either backlit or side lit, and uh, if it's real pleasing light, front lit. And typically, it's usually within a half hour before sunrise or an hour after sunset. Light is usually softer in the evening and the morning, it's just what we call magic hour. So I tend to shoot most of my photographs within a two hour frame before and after sunrise and before and after sunset. But oftentimes I find there's incredible light when it's a stormy day or a snowy day or maybe there's a whiteout blizzard. Usually within an hour or two after sunrise, the light gets too high and it gets contrasty. And usually in the late afternoon, it gets better. But it's not always that time of day. It can be, be in the middle of the day and you can have a storm and, and light can be filtered through rain and you can have really nice soft light, especially when you're, say, in places like Alaska or Africa. Alaska has really long days in the summertime and the sun is quite low, so it depends on where you are on the, on the earth, the quality of light. The light, is, to me, is probably the one most important aspect of making a good picture. Of course, you can't have a good picture with just light. You have to have a, a, a subject and you have to have good composition and uh, when you put those, those three things together, you can usually make a good picture, but you have to be aware of backgrounds, and you don't want to be uh, having distracted backgrounds, and oftentimes it's a matter of uh, simplifying composition. So that's another part of making a good image. Well, an example of light that I think is probably my favorite picture that shows really pleasing light is uh, a picture of a young tigress uh, photographed in India and it's called Light in the Forest and it was a, a beautiful tigress lying on a rock I had to wait three hours for the for the sun to get around to light where she was lying and it just lit her up beautifully it was very early morning and she posed there beautifully and it was filtered through this sort of haze of India and it was very pleasing and once you see that light you think wow that is special you could have put a frog in that rock and it would look good so that is a good example of, of exquisite light another image that i think is pretty powerful is a uh, cape buffalo in, in tanzania charging through this thorn bush and a lot of dust in the air from the, from the uh, dry season there and the light was midday and it was coming through the forest and the dust created the softness so that light is totally midday light, which is rare to get a good picture in, and uh, but it was a soft light. But because of the action of the Cape Buffalo and the dust and the feeling that you wanted it hot and you felt like you were in Africa. Without the light, without the composition, without the subject, uh, it wouldn't work.